We do want to focus our efforts yet again on President Jimmy Carter uh, and former First Lady Rosalind Carter. Uh, of course, this has been really a fairy tale in the making for you know more than 70 years. We want to bring in uh, First Lady's biographer, Andrew Oak. Uh, he's joining us now here uh, on the program to talk about this incredible love story. Uh, and Andrew, thanks so much for being with us. You've written extensively uh, about this particular relationship, this romance. They have known each other for so long. What what are you thinking about today uh, after we got the news over the weekend that Jimmy Carter is in hospice care? Well, it, you're right. It, it, they're the longest married couple. Uh, it'll be 77 years this June. Um, they, they, they were married longer than the Bushes, who were the runner-up at 74 years, I believe. And Jimmy Carter, President Jimmy Carter, the longest living president at 98 years old. I was with President Carter and First Lady Rosalind Carter on Mrs. Carter's birthday celebration last year in August of 2022 when she turned 95. There's no Rosalind Carter almost in this story without President Jimmy Carter and vice versa. I've been to the the, the church where he first asked her out on, on their, their the first date that led to the courtship, which led to the marriage. And it's such a relationship of them being not without each other for so long uh, that one has to respect the great relationship they have, the great love they have, and the life they've had together in a very, very small town of Plains, Georgia. Um, you know, Rosalind Carter was very good friends with Jimmy's sisters growing up. They were all a little bit younger. They all went to the same school. And Jimmy's famous, uh, President Carter's famous mother, Miss, Miss Lillian, who was along for the whole ride through the White House and the, and the peanut brigade and getting to the White House, she was actually caring for Rosalind's father when he was sick and dying. And after Rosalind's father died, she spent time out on the family farm with President Carter, then Jimmy Carter and his sisters. So their lives are just continuously and they've been intertwined since they were very, very young. And you're just looking at some video over the years, Andrew, uh, and, you know, she accompanied him uh, on so many trips in his post-presidency as well uh, as, you know, a humanitarian, uh, you know, building homes for Habitat for Humanity, speaking out at the Carter Center functions and events. She was always by his side. They've been inseparable since. They, they really have, you know, and, and Mrs. Carter, Rosalind Carter, was responsible for heading up the peanut brigade, that door-to-door -door grassroots group of campaigners that literally went around the country telling who this unknown governor of Georgia was to the nation which got him elected. Uh, she really has been a partner when he was president. She sat in on, on nearly every cabinet meeting, an advisory board that she could, and, and not every first lady does that. So she's really had something to add to his personal life, of course, as his wife, but his professional and his political career before, during, and after the White House as two of the most active and prolific post-president and first ladies in American history. Yeah, Andrew, everyone always talks uh, about what was the role. Uh, was it a, you know, a central focus? Was it on the margins of a first lady while her husband uh, is in office? So you're saying Rosalind was key in a lot of decision making, uh, in a lot of advice that she was giving. Is that right? Very much so, and campaign strategies, and like I said, from every element of talking to her husband, working through problems, working through issues, solutions, to literally knocking on doors to get him elected, going to the dinners, going on the humanitarian efforts, as you say, their Carter Center, which is, which is just a remarkable resource for American history and presidential politics, and what she would do with their philanthropies like Habitat for Humanity. Mrs. Carter, one of her uh, uh, longtime causes and philanthropies and efforts is for uh, mental illness in the country, something that we've far from cured or gotten a handle on. So she's really maintained a, a, a presence in American history and in pop culture for the duration of her life with President Carter as a first lady and in their post-White House life together. You know, Andrew, um, obviously they were only in the White House for one term, four years. Does that do anything when you look at the scope of U.S. history? One-term presidents, uh, you know, how impactful, how significant, you know, can they be uh, with, you know, someone like Rosalind by his side throughout the whole thing? Um, this will be pretty impactful, right? right? 
Absolutely. And I mean, even, you know, the four years that were there, if you're a first lady that has that type of presence, if you're a first lady that has a cause that touches so many, which so many do, but you take that active role in your husband's political life, in your husband's administration, then that does a lot more than some a first lady that, that, that maybe does not or does not have as big a presence in his daily life. But to continue that, I think the real story here is their post White House life, because you're right. They had one term, four years. They did what they could do in four years, but they've been going strong well into their 90s. I've attended church in Plains, Georgia, where up until very, very recently, they were still teaching Bible study and Bible school and taking an active role in their community. When I was there for Mrs. Carter's birthday, she was donated to, or uh, uh, not donating, she was um, uh, uh, commemorating her birthday in the Rosalind Carter Childhood Garden next to her home where she grew up in, in Plains. And her, her, her niece lives there now, Leanne Smith, who's a friend. And we, we were, we were uh, designating a statue, a butterfly statue, that goes along with her butterfly trail, which goes past the historic inn in Plains, Georgia. She has done what so many first ladies in the past have done, but taken such an active and modern role, and that's in preserving the legacy of her husband, and thus the legacy of her own work as first lady and wife to this president. Yeah. Andrew, how much was faith uh, a part of their, their lives? Uh, it was integral, right? Massive, massive. Like I say, even to this very point, I'm sure they had consultants and 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 talking to family members who are all active in the church. I, again, when I was down there for her birthday and went in for church service on Sunday, Jimmy Carter's brother's daughter, so Jimmy's niece, was teaching the Sunday school now that her uncle, President Jimmy Carter, was not. The family is so all present there, and they do so much for the and town. And it's a big family. So much Oh, one, it's, it's direct family. It's all yeah. nieces. Nephews. I was sitting next to it at the, at the designation of the butterfly statue next to Mrs. Carter's sister, Alethea, uh, you know, and, and her daughter was there. It, it's, it's a wonderful family. It's a wonderful town and one that, that is very proud of their former president and, and first lady. And they take an active role in their church, their active role in their community and all of the good things that come from that. Just lastly, Andrew, you know, um, this time was coming, this was an inevitability, uh, and so many ha have been preparing themselves, especially there down in Plains, uh, for this inevitability. Uh, and so uh, we were just speaking to some of our reporters down there. Uh, the mood is one of pride and, and hope, but also one of, uh, of sadness as well. Is that how you're feeling? Exactly. You know, when I got the news and I saw the stuff coming over my phone and getting the texts and messages that I was, it is sad because this is such a long and such a fantastic American love story, White House love story, and historical love story. Um, you never want to see those things end. Nobody does live forever. And you look at Mr. Carter, President Carter, rather, who's, who had I mean, brain surgery in his 90s. There's so many different things that he's made it through and pursued and, 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 and just persevered on along with Mrs. Carter at his side. And, yeah. you know, it just it, it's a wonderful thing to remember the legacy and all of the things that both of these individuals have been to the American people and the world, the diplomacy that you mentioned. So it really shouldn't be that sad of a day because it's a day that inevitably comes to all of us. And we should celebrate a life well lived and a life that is continuing to be well lived by Mrs. Carter. All right, Andrew Oka, we appreciate your time, your insight uh, into these, you know, two incredible American lives. We'll definitely be speaking again in the near future. Thanks so much. Thank you so much.